blood testing for blood urea and nitrogen, what's optimal? So the blood urea and nitrogen test quantifies levels of urea, the metabolite that makes uh, urine yellow, that are in your blood. So how do levels of blood urea and nitrogen, or BUN, uh, change during aging? So that's what we're looking at here. In a study of about 378,000 subjects, we can see that lower levels of blood urea and nitrogen are found in youth, with values of around 11 milligrams per deciliter in women and 13 milligrams per deciliter in men that are around 20 years old. And slowly during aging, those values uh, increase, such that a 90-year-old uh, subject would have uh, blood urea and nitrogen values in the range of 20 to 23 uh, average values, uh, 20 to 23 milligrams per deciliter. So then, what's the association between uh, for, all, for blood urea and nitrogen with, with all-cause mortality risk? Can bun levels be altered through diet? And then what's my data? So uh, first, uh, blood urea and nitrogen levels less than 15 milligrams per deciliter are associated with maximally reduced all-cause mortality risk, or ACM for short. So we're looking uh, here at the risk for all-cause mortality on the y-axis plotted against the blood urea nitrogen concentration in blood. And this is a study of around 31 thousand subjects. So the reference range for BUN is 7 to 20 milligrams per deciliter, and that's highlighted by the dashed lines. And what we can see is compared to a BUN of 15, uh, even though 20 is at the high end of the reference range, someone that has a 20 blood urea nitrogen level has about a 40 percent increased risk for all-cause mortality when compared with 15. So the lowest risk for all-cause mortality based on this plot is for BUN levels that are 15 or less. So when considering the aging data and the blood urea of the all-cause mortality, mortality data, it would seem that values less than 15, not 7 to 20, that are uh, on the reference range may be optimal for health. So can, be, can BUN be optimized through diet? How, is it malleable? Can it even, even be altered? So what we're looking at here is a plot of nitrogen intake against urea production. And what we can see is that the higher the nitrogen in, intake, uh, or dietary nitrogen intake, the higher amounts of urea that are produced. And this correlation is almost perfectly linear with a correlation of 0 0.98. A perfectly linear correlation, as good as it gets, is 1.00. So uh, where does dietary nitrogen come from? Well, it comes exclusively from, uh, almost exclusively from amino acids, which are the building blocks, building blocks of protein. So if you eat a lot of protein, you'll have a high content of dietary nitrogen, which should increase your urea production, and correspondingly, you should have higher levels of blood urea nitrogen. Now, this assumes normal kidney function. So if your kidney function is normal and not declining during age, uh, a higher protein intake should lead to a higher blood urea nitrogen level. And just to uh, illustrate that it's just uh, almost exclusively amino acids, uh, essentially from proteins that you're getting dietary nitrogen. Here we're looking at the uh, essential features of uh, fatty acid, and you can see that there are no ends, no nitrogen in its chemical structure. And similarly for sugars, uh, including uh, glucose, galactose, and fructose, you don't see any ends for nitrogen in their chemical structure either. So the higher your dietary protein intake, uh, including amino acids, uh, the higher your urea production and potentially your blood urea nitrogen. So is that true? What's my data? So uh, for those who, who don't know, I blood test four to six times per year, and then I track my diet every day, including weighing all my food, and then I uh, log m how much of each food into a, an app, uh, and then that tells me my macro and micronutrient content, and then I log all that into an Excel file. So then for each blood test, I can correlate the average dietary intake during that period to look for correlations between my diet with my blood test results. So what I'm showing here are uh, blood test data uh, for the last five years, 25 different blood tests. Each blue dot corresponds to a different uh, blood test result over the past five years. And I've plotted blood urea nitrogen levels on the y-axis against my daily average protein intake. And what we can see is, uh, as in indicated by the red uh, dotted trend line, uh, is that the higher my protein intake goes, the higher my blood urea nitrogen levels are. And this correlation is strong uh, with a uh, of 0 0.78. The uh, R-squared, or the percentage of the variability in blood urea nitrogen that can be explained by protein intake, my protein intake, is pretty solid. It's 60%. That's a large percentage of bun that can be explained by my protein intake. And this is a significant correlation as indicated by the p-value. So when c considering that lower levels of bun are found in youth and that greater than 15 is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, I monitor my protein intake to make sure that my bun is less than 15 milligrams per deciliter. All right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, for more uh, you can find me lots of places online. Have a great day.